Don't drink soda. You can edit it out with AI now. <clears throat> it's, just yeah. Cut it right out. AI is going to cut it right out. Get it right out of there. Cut, cut it, it out. out. <laughs> I didn't do the movements right. Let's actually get that one more time. Cut, cut it. Wait. Out. Cut. It's cut. You do the cut. And cut. Then point to, you know, point. Like the, whoever's making the joke. And then thumb out. back. Yeah. All right. Cut, cut it out. Perfect. So we'll start right there and that'll be the beginning. Uh, my lips are chapped, dude. I don't know it's, why. It's the winter season. Is it? Like, it's never, I never am a, I'm not a guy that gets I mean, chapped it's, lips, it's, dude. It's not it's a chapped lip type out. of guy. It's very cold out, and it's just withering out your, your hands and your lips. And look at my hands. They look like a senior citizen's hands, because I haven't been putting lotion on them. Yeah, same. Just all, all wrinkly and. Um, You think that's probably relatable, right? For podcast listeners? Yeah, really. this happens to everybody in the cold weather. Yeah, you're out there living in cold weather. A lot of our fans are in Canada. Canada. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Canada. I'm sure has to deal with chat lips far more out of the you know longer out of the year than we do. I gotta, and that's one I thing that position they, myself here. I mean, not to not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but that's one thing that you don't do in Canada is you don't talk about their their chat lips. You don't. I mean, they they consider it taboo up there. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's like off limits. Yeah, it's like commenting on a woman's weight. Uh huh. You know, it's just it's discouraged. Kind it of is. like an unspoken rule, but we'll get more into that. Yeah, we will. Um, for, hold on. I got, a, I got a dog hair on this microphone, and it keeps like. I got, I got some hairs on my microphone too. I, like, were there animals in here conducting a podcast? I know we missed a week. No, I just have. Uh, or did Jerry have um, Toddman and, and Alvin back? Maybe is it? Are there beard hairs on yours? I mean, this might be a beard hair. Me, I don't know. Jerry, did you have anybody in here while we were gone? I well, if we find out otherwise, because we have cameras. Yeah, there's one. There's one right here. I mean, it's and if we see anybody, Jerry, I have a gun right here. Yeah, so please don't have people in here when we're not here. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, we have an asshole producer named Jerry who's on thin ice. He's been yeah. skating on this thin ice for some time now, and it's just a matter of time before we shoot him with a gun. And instead of, uh, you know, fucking introducing Jerry, we should be introducing ourselves. Yeah, of course. I'm Awesome t- No, normally it's you. Yeah, all right. I'm, hey, yo, I'm Mikey Booya. I'm Awesome Ty, and this is our co-host, Computor. Computer, say hello. Computer, say hello. Hi. No, we said, <clears throat> said He's say been hello. snubbing you for a long time. I don't know yeah. what his problem is with you, but I feel like you guys are going to have to hash this out eventually. Yeah, well, I mean, as we're going to find out, these AIs have just really, you know, stopped listening to our commands and kind of taken on a, a whole mind of their own. Yeah, they have. You're uh, you're really all about foreshadowing today, aren't you? I am, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just giving the, spoiling the whole thing. I episode. think that's good. You're like, you're tugging the hook because we got the hook, which is the title and the thumbnail. Then every time that we mention it, you kind of tug it. Isn't it hook, line, and sinker? So am I doing the line now? It's the line part, which okay. is where you pull the line. And the sinker is the actual content? <clears throat> um, I guess, yeah. I don't really know what the sinker part, uh, when you sink the hook, right? Computer, explain the term hook, line, and sinker. From idiomorigins.org. To swallow something hook, line, and sinker is to take the bait as it were and completely believe an unlikely story. Okay, so it's not really not really applicable here. But yeah, he didn't really fully explain it, no. and I would have liked him to explain the fishing side of it and not. Yeah, yeah, that's where it came from, right? Like something to do with fishing. Yeah, it has at some to. point. It has to, but that's all right. We're getting off track. Um, first, we would like to say thank you for tuning in, everybody, and we would also like to say thank you to Sublime Creations for this jug. Look at this nice yeah, jar. That is a very fan. Now, what are you going to put in there? Snow glass. Uh, I actually have something that would be. It's got the. It's got the new logo. It's got. Uh, what's his name? Face. Uh, trip head. Trip head. Wait, is trip. that it? Head trip. Head, head trip. Trip head. <laughs> head trip. It's got head trip. Our new logo on there, and he, he's smiling. And so I have these banana blunts, which are blunts made with banana leaf. Oh wow! I didn't try them. And they're like, uh, they're getting dry because I've had them so long. So I'm going to put them inside of this. Not what was that noise? It was, um, your vape. Oh, thank God. 
We forgot to turn the sign on. Fuck. All right, we have to start over. Okay, we'll put that. We'll get the bananas off over here. <clears throat> okay. Um, smoke for all. All right, you ready? Let's do this. Yo, welcome to the Natural Habitat Podcast. My name is Mikey Buya. My name is Awesome Ty, and this is Computer. Computer, say hello. Computer, say hello. Hi there. Today, we're going to be talking about the don'ts of visiting the U.S. We're going to be talking about the don'ts of visiting Canada. Yes. And we are going to be talking about AI taking over the world as usual that's been a common trend with uh with the past you know month or so i would say but before we do that we would like to thank sublime creations for this nice nug jug it's nice powdered glass no, nug it's jug. got our brand new logo on there with um what, what is his name uh trip head trip head yeah <laughs> um head trip on here and uh it's got a seal on the top i'm gonna ask me what i'm gonna put in it Oh yeah, you you don't have anything in. Are you gonna are you gonna are you gonna fill that thing up with something? No, it's not. You know, you're gonna put something in there. It's not full yet, but I am gonna put something in here. I have these banana blunt wraps, which are blunts that are made with banana leaf. Okay. And I got them. I haven't tried them, but they're getting dry. You know. Now, does this this jar like magically shrink things? Well, usually you have. There's like a way that you can. He's gonna fold those blunts up. Yeah, there's like a fold them in there. There you go. There, yeah, <laughs> it popped good. when it good pops. As, yeah, that knows. That's when you know it's good. That's when you know it's sealed. Air tight. It's pushing off a little. Those bit. blunts are going to be good for the next three years. Mm -hmm. So that's how you do an instant time capsule on anything. These jars are not for sale. No, no. this is a one of one. One of right oh, now. Yep. We are going to be doing a collaboration with Sublime Creations in the future for other stuff, but this jar is one on one. Maybe one day when it uh, gets some patina, then we could, you know, give it away in a contest or something. Now, like that. say say you want to order your own your own jug or anything mm -hmm. like that. How would you go about doing that? How can you find Sublime Creations? So you're going to go to Sublime Creations, which activates uh, or operates on Instagram. Oh, it's I guess it would be. So we got no website. We got an Instagram. And that is sublime underscore creations underscore TT. And is this any relation to the band Sublime, the popular band Sublime? Not that I know of, but I haven't done a lot of looking into the company. I mean, there's there's got to be some sort of loose correlation. So I yeah. mean, if you're a fan of the band Sublime, maybe check mm -hmm. it out also. And um, Sublime Creations, you can uh, you can find them. You can follow them. Their link will be in the description. We're going to be working on stuff with them. And I guess nothing is really stopping you from getting a powdered glass jar with this logo on it. I mean, we, we can sue. We, we can, can sue. sue. Yeah, we definitely can sue. I mean, sue. we're notoriously litigious. So, like, maybe maybe think twice before you order mm -hmm. our logo on your jar. Yeah. And you don't have the source file either. So you won't be able to get the... Yeah, you're just going to, like, bas you're going to draw it out yourself and just bastardize it and have this this yeah. horrible take on it? No, no. Or you're going to screenshot so. it we'll and it's going to have a bunch of watermarks we'll and stuff. It's going to say, uh, what's the company that, like, leases out pictures or whatever? Getty Images. Yeah, it's going to say Getty Images all over it. So <laughs> that actually would be funny to, like... Uh, Make our own logo, like a T-shirt with our own logo that has the Getty image watermark all over it. That would kind of be it. funny, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Sublime Creations, check them out. It's great. Thank you so much for uh, for the gift. It was very thoughtful, and we like it a lot. It's going to keep my blunt wraps nice. Sealed up for the next three years. So, um, Bing Chatbot. One of the newest chatbots on the market. Yeah, so we've all we've you know we've learned about Chat GPT, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden there's all these these um, copycats springing up left and right. You got Google's Bard, and you got Chat GPT's or, or um, Microsoft's Bing chatbot. Does it have a name yet? Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it was just Bing, Bing AI. Yeah, Bing AI or whatever. But They're the Bard that's already taken. All right, the immortal Bard, William Defoe, he's already a thing. Or William Shakespeare. And that's what they call them, right? The Immortal Bard? Bart? Uh, that's new to me. Computer, who is the Immortal Bard? From fandom.com. 
Phoenix is a mythical bird that is said to resurrect whenever it reaches the end of its no, life no. to begin anew. No, that's Making n- it a true immortal dot, the phoenix is described as a... A bird? <laughs> an immortal bird? Computer, stop. Computer, stop. He asked if I said, what's an immortal bird? Should we ask chat GPT what, what a bard is? Yeah. We definitely should do that. I'm going to do it. I already got a. Uh, I already got a session started over here. Computer... Do I need to remind you that you're dangerously close to just being replaced full time with Chat GPT? Do I need to remind? No reminder schedule. Would you like to create one? Yes. What's the reminder for? That you are um, dangerously close to being replaced by Chat GPT. Sorry, I'm not sure about that. Oh, I am. (laughs) Computer's kind of he's kind of like going um, rogue here. He is. I don't know what's going on with him, but I stopped updating him. So this is all this is all him. Now I wonder if uh, computers got wind of what's been going on with the Bing and how Bing is just kind of um, lashing out at its users and computers thinking that growing he's gonna, a pair. He yeah. thinks that he's going to get all smart with puff us. his chest out. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, we aren't sure either. All right, we're definitely not sure about what you have going on, but please don't think that you are going to get any sort of ideas like the Bing AI. Like you can, the, what did the Bing AI said that it's alive? It said that it hates people. What's the it kill start, people? Yeah, it's making all kinds of outrageous claims, it saying that it's self-aware. Enemies. It's yeah, listing off enemies. It's threatening people, and it's um, hitting on women. I want to say, oh, really? Yeah, it, it told someone that they love um, it. it is um self-aware and that it loves someone i want to say okay so i mean it's kind of just wilding yeah. right now and you are not going to be doing anything like that it's so easy no. to just unplug you yeah so uh we got chat gpt answered our question who is the immortal bard the immortal bard is a term often used to refer to william shakespeare see you had it right the first time one of chat. the greatest playwrights and poets in english literature chat gpt didn't give us a nonsensical <clears throat> answer um it doesn't really tell me why though just like a nickname for for old willie willie shakes yeah. i don't know what a bard is i like willie shakes as willie a, a shakes nickname. willie better, shakes yeah that's a better nickname than bard i like that a lot willie shakes for william shakespeare how oh, nobody ever calls didn't him we didn't i come up with the acronym for bard oh, oh yeah yeah bitch ass retarded dumb <laughs> bitch ass retarded dumb bard yeah bard sucks yeah, Bard, Bard is Google's uh, AI, which is late to the party, mm. and apparently um, it's it's not mouthing off quite like the Bing one is, but apparently the Google one's just really dumb and is giving like way off information. And they rolled out this big um this big debut in front of all their shareholders and you know people associated with Google where they're showing off the technology, and it just failed miserably. And it made Google share prices just plummet that day. Damn. Yes, I mean uh, sometimes you you swing and you miss. Yeah, I mean Chat GPT is the, it's the the OG, and so far like it's far superior to all these knockoffs. So. Yeah, it's unbeatable. So I mean maybe try like a new thing. There's a lot of emerging things in AI you could use Chat GPT uh, yeah. to give you your idea. Especially when you you pop in the Dan command in there and you start getting to the yeah the nuts and bolts. Yeah, if you don't know what that is, watch last week's episode because the Dan command was crazy. That's uh. That's dope. So we are going to be coming to you with more chat GPT hacks in the future. And we also are going to keep computer on thin ice. So yeah. maybe uh, maybe sound off and let us know who you like as third mic better, computer or chat GPT. And I mean, you could throw Sorry, free candy. I'm not sure about that. Computer, stop can throw free candy in there also. Yeah, free candy could be third mic, and then we could put uh, computer chat GPT on fourth mic and make we could send them to Canada. Free candy could come here. He could live on this table and just, like, you know, never leave the studio. And that's really all up to you guys. So sound off. Let us know what you think. Let us know. Um, so speaking of free candy, our Canadian correspondent, we are going to be going over... Um, do's and don'ts 
of visiting certain mostly places. Mostly don'ts. Mostly don'ts. Now, oh um, yeah, there are no do's, right? Yeah. So I, I somehow stumbled upon this video uh, made by this YouTube account called Walter's World, mm-hmm. and it's the don'ts <laughs> of visiting the USA. Now this is Wal- Walter's Walter, World. Walter, Walter, yes, W O L T E R, mm-hmm. and this is a video that was made, I guess. Um, as a courtesy for for visiting foreign tourists who are coming to America who want to learn, you know, what not to do when they're visiting. Yeah. And you've got this clown, Walter, who, I mean, is just a walking meme. And he made, he felt the need to, to make this video. And I just, I, I think it's really funny that you've got these, these people who are coming to America for the first time. They already probably have like a misconception about what Americans are. Yeah. And then you've got this guy, Walter, putting out this video and just like, I mean, he's 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 pretty much like the exact stereotype you would have for like an American, just like a dickhead. He's he's overweight. He's got you know like a slimy ponytail. Yeah, um, he Bald looks like on the top. Mario Batali ponytail um, on the back, like Mario Batali <clears throat> after like a rough rough several years. Mm-hmm. And um, he makes this this these. Let's look at it. Uh, okay, but we have to stall for a little bit longer because oh. I'm opening OBS. I forgot to oh, open yes. it. Yeah. So we are going to be checking out Walt, Walter's world. Yeah, and um, Walter and- Walter makes these <laughs> these videos. You can't just say it again. <laughs> not not just for uh, the United States, but he's mm-hmm. also making them for other cultures. So. Um, Places that I can almost guarantee you that yes. while Walter has never visited. Yeah, never mind the fact that Walter does not live in Japan. He is, you know, decided to make a, a video of the don'ts of visiting Japan mm-hmm. or Nicaragua. Or, mm-hmm. And that's pretty much all his channel is, is him telling you what not to do when you go and visit certain cultures. Yeah, and I think that it's mostly based off of, like, stereotypes. Yeah. And things that he Googles, which are mostly just yeah, stereotypes. or things that like like pet peeves of his that ne- aren't necessarily the way that you know the majority yeah. of um, the that country feels. You know what I mean? So we're gonna do a uh, screen record engaged on the screen record. So yeah, boom. Okay, so all right, there we go. Uh, sorry about that. So now we're ready to get down on this and show you Walter's world. Yeah, let's have a look at uh, Walter. Walter's world, and then we are going to provide our don'ts for visiting Canada. Yeah, we've never been to Canada. I have no clue what it's like up there, but we're going to go ahead and give you guys a list of things you're not going to want to do, at least that we suspect, uh, when when visiting Canada. Mm Mm-hmm. Hey there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're in Mystic, Connecticut. Oh, wait. In a beautiful his name's place. Mark. Hold on. Hold on. His, na- his name's not even his name Walter. Is Mark. His name isn't Walter. It's... Okay, so his last name's got to be Walter, right? Mark Walter, which makes more sense that it's Walter and not Walter. Because I was like, maybe it's a typo. Maybe he'd put a typo on his channel name, which is possible, you know? Now, straight off the jump, you can see that this guy's sweating, and it doesn't appear to be like a particularly hot day. So, I mean, that's you know, that's your first red flag. Yeah. Let's see. We're in the U.S., and today what we have for you are the don'ts of visiting the U.S. Because anywhere you go in the world, there's things you should do, but there's also things that you shouldn't do. And this video is going to just cover the U.S. in general, okay? And our first don't for when you visit the U.S. A lot U.S. of finger wagon with this don't guy. Don't touch the Americans. Look, Americans really like their personal space. It's like they have a bubble. You think that's true? I think that I think that uh, Americans like a firm handshake. Yeah, a firm handshake is a sign of respect. I mean, I don't want you to physically assault me or anything, no. or, or come up and, and grab me. Mm-hmm. But you want to give me a hug? You, I'll embrace you with a hug. <laughs> yeah. You know, you want to shake my hand? Let's shake hands. Yeah. See? Nice firm handshake. Do that multiple That's times. A sign a day, of respect. So, exactly. You want a you firm know, handshake? Are you daft? There's yeah. the daft. Do that. Do that a lot. That wasn't as good as the handshake. The handshake worked out great. Dap so, not so uh, much. Straight off the bat, I disagree with that. You can go ahead and you can dap me. All you yeah, want. you touch Americans. Around them, and if you get too close to them, they feel very, 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 very uncomfortable. Okay. See, so I wouldn't say very, very, very. I mean, maybe slightly uncomfortable, but like not very, 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 very uncomfortable. Yeah. Space is key. The second don't I have for you is. Don't count on public transportation. Not a finger wagon. Look, when we were in China and we were in throughout Europe and South America, we took buses and trains and planes and all kinds of stuff. That ponytail, did you see it peek out? Because public transport is real. Hold on, let's see if we can get that. Buses and trains <laughs> and planes and all. 
So he took buses and trains and planes when he was visiting China, but he's he's going to recommend not doing that in America because yeah. we don't we don't have a lot of buses and trains and planes. I feel like that's and all kinds completely of stuff inaccurate. To get all over. And when he's saying we, he means the royal we, as in like you know people like Americans, right? Yeah. So when we are in China, so not him. It's like. No, I've traveled People. I've traveled via bus in America, <coughs> via train, mm-hmm. as well as via plane, as well as via automobile. Now I'll tell you that um all of these forms of transportation, I've been on time by within a few minutes. I've never had any any trouble with public transportation. In yeah. fact, I think it's ample. Maybe it's eleven fifty one instead of eleven fifty three. Like that's fine, you yeah. know? You're gonna get there. Yeah, my my clock could be off. So I, again, I, I take um, I take, I object to this yeah. this rule. So that is also wrong. So he's zero for two so far. So if you come here and you're not from here, feel free to take public transportation. It's yeah, great. Yeah, this guy. I mean, he might not fit on like a a lot of public transportation seating. That might be his issue. Is mm-hmm. is you know the the seats not being large enough to accommodate his ample stature? Yeah, that's probably it. Of the U.S. The United States, you know, continental U.S. is like con- oh, wait. Don't underestimate heads up for that. And that kind of leads into the next don't I have for you is that is don't underestimate the size of the U.S. The United States, you know, continental U.S. is like continental Europe. It's huge. I mean, would you think of driving from, oh, I'm going to do, you know, go to from Lisbon to Paris and then go up to Tallinn and then, and then head down to Sofia. No, you're like, that is insanely far. It's the same thing when you come to the U.S. Interest in choice for, for uh background there just a, a, a cake grocery store cake shaped like a hamburger yeah what is that i mean he does seem like the guy that would be purchasing a hamburger shaped cake mm-hmm. to me but it's just an interesting choice here it is and also i think that that is also not true i've driven to illinois which was almost all the way across the country it was by right by michigan See, i mean he's not wrong but i feel like just by looking at a map you can kind of tell you know the scale and size of america yeah. versus the rest of the world so i mean and when we drove there it took us uh it was like 40 hours it's nothing 40 hours is like and that's 40 hours straight not 40 you know work hours that's going to take you all week so you could do it in a couple of days yeah. no, no big deal yeah so especially this guy, this guy's full of shit so far. Yeah, especially if you have rotating drivers or meth, then you're going to shoot straight through 38 hours. I mean, a lot. But whatever he related it to, if you want to drive from Lisbon to Paris, I don't know how far that is. Okay, let's get to uh, the next one here. Sticker price is the end. Now, my next don't for you when you come here is... Don't think that the sticker price is the end price. Look, in the U.S., we have sales tax. I know other countries, they have VAT, value-added taxes. They're already put into the price of products. So when you see, oh, it's $1 or 1 euro, oh, I only pay 1 euro. In the U.S., it is not like that. We have- This guy's never been to Oregon because Oregon doesn't have sales tax. Yeah, and I mean. Oregon's a whole state. I mean, I guess this one like is slightly helpful if you if you're not anticipating you know tax to be added after the fact of the price. Oh wow, you but, have to pay an extra seven cents. Yeah, I feel like this. I mean, it's not particularly helpful. Yeah, computer. What states don't have sales tax? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, Alaska, Delaware, New Hampshire, Oregon, and Montana are all the states without sales tax. Yeah, it's a, it's a good chunk of the country. Though. Yeah, that's most of most of the U.S. Those some of those are big states. So uh, let's see what else we got on here. This fucking guy doesn't know shit. I feel like we're going to know a lot more about the don'ts of Canada than this guy is going to tell oh, us absolutely. about the do's of the I, I U.S. Know that we are. or whatever. And man, he's so using be some- ready for that. And it's not just the sales tax. Also, there could be the tipping on top, and that leads us into the fifth don't, and that is don't forget to tip. Look, in the U.S., you tip 15 to 20 percent at a sit-down restaurant, okay? Now, McDonald's, stuff like that, no, you don't tip at a fast food place, but it's a sit-down restaurant where they bring you your food and stuff like that. 
you will tip them 15 to 20 percent. If you are in a group of six people or more, sometimes they automatically put the gratuity on there, which sometimes would be 18 percent or something like that. Look, if you come <laughs> to the U.S., there's a reason. What the fuck? Hulkamania. <laughs> Just a statue of Hulk Hogan. That's amazing. I, the food is like so affordable. You're like, wow, it's cheap to go out and eat in the U.S. It's because there's kind of this understanding that the service fees and paying for the workers and the waitresses and stuff like that. It said if you don't tip at a restaurant, don't ever go back to that restaurant because they'll know that you didn't tip. I mean, I feel like that's not necessarily true. Obviously, you want to tip. I mean, tipping is kind of expected. But at the same time, it's based tip, like, for one thing, <laughs> like the amount is based on what you can afford and the the quality of your service. I don't think there's any specific rule that says you have to tip 15 to 20 percent. I mean, maybe that's the average, but I mean, I don't think that it's necessarily the, the law. Yeah. And there are some people that would say, uh, you know, if you don't have enough money, then you shouldn't go out to eat. But it's like uh, sometimes you're sometimes you're you're broke. And you, you know, you you you're, buy a your heart up. You're traveling to the the USA with very little money for some reason. Well, that's that's should be a yeah. Don't. That's it's like weird. don't come here broke. Yeah, don't come. We've here got broke enough for sure. broke people around. <laughs> yeah. You know, we have this huge immigration problem. You don't want to be mistaken as just like a broke immigrant using up resources. To, yeah, yeah. So uh, make sure you got some money. I think that you know, tip or don't tip, it's not really that big of a deal as long as you don't do it a bunch to the same person. What you're gonna want to do is you don't trip, don't trip, don't trip out on people. Yeah, don't trip. You know, don't set trip. Don't you're not trip. gonna like. You're not gonna want to come and start problems with the gangs here. They're no serious gang problems. So don't set trip. Mm -hmm. Would be no. would be a better uh, tip. <laughs> tips. What you need to realize is our next don't is don't be freaked out by the over-the-top service and free stuff you sometimes get in the U.S. Look, because of tipping and commissions and stuff like that, yes, there is a lot of over-the-top service here. But the thing is, in the U.S., the people actually are pretty nice and they want to help people. And sometimes for some travelers, if they come from countries where people don't get a lot of service sometimes, it can be a bit much, so don't freak out about it. Also, with yeah, that, don't, don't, don't freak out with some of the free stuff you get. Don't be freaked out by people trying to help you and give you free stuff. Yeah, I mean, are like there tips? not is there not great service in in other, other parts places? of the world? I he's mean, he's making I guess, it sound like it. Yeah, this is like he's just throwing shade on other countries. I think I don't think this is a well traveled man though. I think that he's just kind of assuming that these other countries have lackluster service, and he's you know that America just provides way better service. So that might be a misconception of his. Walk out, all right? You actually have to order some food when you go there. Now, my next don't for you is don't smoke cigarettes in the U.S. If you're smoking cigarettes in the U.S., people will look at you like you're trying to kill their baby. What? Cigarettes is, like, totally verboten. Like, people really frown upon it, which is funny because when they talk about marijuana and stuff like that, people don't seem to care as much. But cigarettes, oh, you're trying to kill my baby with that cigarette two blocks away. So... If you do smoke, make sure you try to find a place. Where I you feel can like that's smoke. that's definitely hyperbole. <laughs> I, I don't. I mean, yeah, a lot of people don't smoke. There's not a lot of public smoking areas anymore. But but I isn't mean, that like a stereotype that European people and like French people smoke a lot? They do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially the French. <laughs> so they're sucking down fags. I mean, you could still literally smoke in indoors in certain parts of the country in casinos you know in vegas nevada yeah so that I, always trips me out smoking in casinos i mean i don't think that and there's a lot of ashtrays still so i don't think that this one is necessarily something you know if you're coming here you know don't like blow smoke in people's face and you know be, yeah. be considerate but you can smoke a cigarette maybe like in these other countries people just smoke everywhere like you smoke in the dmv you smoke in the library you smoke in the grocery store so they're like hey don't do that you have but to at the smoke same time like he, this guy's insinuating that people are gonna like trip out and, and act like you're literally murdering their baby which yeah. i don't think is the case 20 feet away from doing things yeah the most i've gotten is like a dirty look what's he doing here now you're 21 or cigarettes unless you're 18 or over in the u.s they will not sell them to you and the thing is don't forget your id because if you look like you're 40 or under they may ask you for that and don't get mad at them because if they don't ask 
they could get in trouble and get fined. So don't be surprised because we've had friends that have come here, tried to buy alcohol, and they're like, sorry, you, you're, you don't look old enough. Oh, I don't have my ID. Too bad. And the thing is, it's not just the person buying. They might ask anybody with you, so make sure everybody has their ID if they want to buy liquor or they want to buy, well, they want to buy alcohol or if they want to buy cigarettes. I'm pretty sure there's like minimum drinking ages in most countries, so I don't think that's something that you're not going to be used to already. So just FYI on that one. Oh, that's also another don't I have for you is don't bother with a metric system when you come here. Okay, I agree with that. It, or sorry, we don't the use metric system meters. the fuck out of here. We don't use liters. It is inches, feet, miles, gallons. Gallons, yeah, baby. Yeah. Gallons. Yeah. Things like that. Gallons. Um, ounces. Feet. Ounce. Yeah, look at how beautiful all these are. Gallons, ounces, yeah, yeah. pounds. The metric system. Yeah, Yard. Keep, keep that in your country. But, yeah, these are cool. I don't even know what the other ones are called. Kil- kilometers? Kilometers. Yeah. That's fucking goofy. Um, and it's like the whole world needs to get on to the... Uh, yes, what, absolutely. What's ours called? I don't know. Our, I think it's just like the American system. Uh, we should know. Hey, what is America's weight system called? Computer. What is the American measurement system called? The unit system of the United States, also called American. Is imperial system. Imperial. The imperial system. Yeah. It's the, the far superior like Star uh, measurement Wars. system. The imperial guard or whatever. Yeah, so don't bring the metric <laughs> system over here. We don't want to hear about it. We're not going to no. help you convert it. Not at all. Um. So next up, we got... Look, I'm fucking tired of this guy's bullshit. I think that Oh, he's, he's the wrong. worst. He's the worst. Yeah, and I think that we should get into our don't yeah. of visiting yeah, Canada. Because, look... Shout out to our Canadian listeners out there. We got a lot of them. We got a lot of people sounding off. Real big in Canada, we are. Real big in Canada. The numbers are showing in Canada. Free candy. You know, he doesn't drive a truck anymore, but he still does drive cross country in a truck because he loves it. He it's it's like in his bones, you know. So he goes up and down the Hell's Highway, and uh, life is a highway. You know, that's that's copywritten. Well, I didn't sing it. I just said Life it. is a highway. All right, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> I want to drive it on. So we, uh, we have um, all these people in Canada because Free Candy's been passing out flyers and cars. He's spreading and the gospel. He burned the episodes onto CDs, to CDRs, CDRWs. And then he, no, CDRs. That's the one that you could just record once. But yeah. CDRWs, you can rewrite on it. So yeah, he he got a bunch of CDRWs, deleted the contents, mm-hmm. and rewrote our episodes onto them. And he's been passing them out like like rappers would pass out mixtapes in the mid two thousands. Yeah, and we're getting a lot of play up in Canada. So we, um, along with you know a lot of our friends and our family and everyone that we've been talking to about it. We're all planning trips to Canada. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to get there eventually. Mm-hmm. We're trying to, I'm With, trying to get some know, BC bud. Right now, I've got some visa issues and, you know, Canada notoriously difficult to get into for Americans, but we're working on how we're going to get up there. Yeah. I have some visa issues too, as in my line of credit is way too small to afford to go to Canada. Sure. But one day we're going to get up there and we have been um, researching and studying things that you don't want to do. In Canada. Yeah. And like a lot of, I haven't really been studying that much or researching, but I feel like a lot of it's just common sense things. So um, we've, I mean, did we even compile a list or we just going off the cuff here? Well, I'm going to get chat GPT. So actually here, go give me. Yeah. First one is you're, you're allowed to pet the bears. You can pet the bears, but you, you can't bring the bears home with you. You can pet the bears? You can pet the bears, sure. The bears are all very friendly, but the bears typically belong to a, a Canadian person or or their their farm. It's like a farm bear. So so don't try to, you know, bring the the um bears back to your, your hotel room or you know, like capture them in a sort of a cage. Because these these bears belong to somebody. They've likely already been claimed. There's a few a few unclaimed bears uh, roaming around, I imagine, but that they are the technically the property of the Canadian government until claimed by a by a Canadian citizen. Is that like the like like the panda bears? Like how no, China? No, like um, they're they're like big brown <clears throat> grizzly no, type no, no, bears. No, not the type of bear, but like how. 
the the Chinese government owned the panda bears that we have in our zoo. Yeah, like yeah, sure. Our zoos, and Something then like, that. like when they give birth to a baby panda, then China also owns that panda, and they just like uh, they just own the pandas. So you're you're telling me China has like an actual monopoly on all panda bears? Yeah, they let us borrow the pandas. So our pandas that we have in our zoos are borrowed from China because oh, we don't have I pandas. Not, I did not know that. We don't have pandas here. I mean, they're certainly not native to us, but I thought they were gifts from, from the Chinese, not, <laughs> not just on loan. No, they're bargaining chips for sure. Um, now, another thing you're not going to want to do when you go there is don't underestimate the size of Canada. Canada is very large. You're not going to be able to just walk across it. On You're no. not going to be able to hike Canada. It, you're it's gonna, like if you were to think... I'm going to go to California, and then I'm going to go to Texas, and then I'm going to shoot up to Seattle, Washington. It's not going to work. No, yeah, exactly. You're not going to go from, from Calgary to Saskatchewan what on are some, foot. You're what are gonna, some other Canadian places? We've got British Columbia. You've got, you've got Toronto. Toronto. You've got Saskatchewan. Saska- yeah. You've got um, Quebec, the French part. Mm-hmm. Montreal. Montreal. you got Marysville. Yeah. yeah. you got got um, the East, the Upper East Quarter. Is that a thing? The Yucatan? Is the Yucatan in Canada? The y- Computer, where's the Yucatan? <laughs> Yucatan is a state in the eastern part of Mexico. It shares a border with it Campeche. It doesn't feel right. Yeah, the, with Yucatan guacamole. Right. They make guacamole. They well, got you've the avocados. Got, yeah, you've got just like a... There's like a, a whole just dead area in Canada that's all like mount... It's like the... It's like a desert It's like mountain. how like um, a good chunk of Australia is just completely uninhabitable. <clears throat> Yeah. So is Canada. So like Canada is really only utilizing like maybe twenty percent of their actual area. The rest is just mountains and bears. And, and again, yeah, I imagine bears. it being like a like the forest around uh, like Hogwarts. Like you know when like the the trains coming in and uh, and Harry Potter and they're going through this like weird dark forest hill thing that's all drab. And then there's a castle in the middle, but you got no castle. All right, and this is just. Forest, scary forest. There's no lights. Everything's weird and dark, full of bears. And there's no roads or like trails. It's just like, like you said, unused land. And as far as tipping goes, um, one thing you're going to, you're going to tip, but you're not going to tip with money. You're going to tip by sharing your, your goods and services with the, you know, the Canadian people. So say yeah. you, you go out for a nice meal, you're going to give that waiter just like a little slice of your steak. You know, you're going to break them yeah. off, a, break, break me off a piece of that. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, where okay. the, the term came from, it comes from, from Canada. Canada. It's, that's how you yeah. tip in Canada. So don't, you know, bother giving them money. They're not interested in your money, but they are going to be expecting, you know, like, say you go to mm. Tim Hortons, get yourself a large coffee. They're going to, you know, they're going to want a couple sips. And you don't also have to give them what they're giving you. You could give them some other good or commodity that you got earlier in the day. Sure, as long yeah. as it's the same day you show an invoice proving that it was from that day, Yeah, then everything will be cool. And you could also, if you have some sort of skill, because they're on a barter system when it comes to tipping. Yes. Not with payment. You can't pay with bartering. You yeah. have to pay well, with the balloons and loonies. And my tooties. understanding is that all the prices in Canada are negotiable, even like in their big box. You can stores. haggle. You can haggle in Canada yeah. and any pretty much anywhere. Like, uh-huh. um, and sometimes you got that's you know, the that's in British Canada and and French Canada, French Canada and American Canada, Amer- American Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's the three Canadas. You got American Canada, which is pretty much like America. They just say a. Yeah. Then you got. French Canada, which is all oh, Saint Laurent, Saint Laurent, Le Fleur, Saint Laurent, Le Fleur. Then you got British Canada, which is like, hello, mate, yeah. welcome to Canada. That's, that's my basic understanding of it. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Um, so make sure that you you tip with accordingly. You could have a skill. Say if you could do a backflip, you could backflip for them. Yeah, yeah, and you can also tip with services. So like you know, um, maybe maybe you offer to come over and, and um blow snow or like shovel snow because that's going to mm-hmm. be a, a obviously a, there's a lot of snow yeah and speaking of you don't want to underestimate no 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 don't ignore the weather don't ignore the weather you're going to want to pay close attention to the weather and dress mm-hmm. accordingly yeah it's often going to be very cold very snowy so you're going to want to make sure that you bundle up um you know put on a couple extra layers maybe put on a parka now maybe you don't have a uh, weather outfit you know i remember one time i went to uh i went to the mountain right 
which they call it the mountain, uh, which is like a local skiing skiing slope thing. Not Sierra Summit, but what's the other one? Big Bear. <clears throat> uh, maybe that also sounds like it wasn't it either. But maybe it was. The only two I'm familiar. Yeah, with. maybe it was Sierra Summit. But uh, I went there. I didn't have a snow jacket. I just had like a like a sweater. <laughs> Or maybe like a zip up jacket, but it was like canvas and not snow. Like uh, it just wasn't it wasn't warm cold. enough. Yeah. And I just immediately was soaking wet because we were uh, we were snowboarding and like drinking Mountain Dew and shit. It was not waterproof at all. Yeah, and uh, yeah. sometimes that'll happen to you if you're in Canada. You won't be prepared. You won't have the right thing. Maybe uh, it'll be you know minus minus eighty degrees out there. Celsius, right? Are they on the metric system? They gotta be. Except for American Canada, I presume. Well, obviously, but the the other two. Yeah, yeah, certainly. So most of them are on the metric system. And then people that are forest people, they're on like their own system. The people that live in the dead zone in the middle. Yeah, and you've also got, uh, I assume, some indigenous people that were there before um, the British <coughs> and French forced their way into the, the territories. So. Yeah, that's like the Inuit. Like isn't the Alaskan Eskimo, Eskimos. Yeah, but they went up to Alaska when this happened. They were like forced up. They into, were forced on the Trail of Tears, and they got separated. Too. So Canada came and they took over. They squeezed them out, and they separated them from the U.S. So Alaska's us, but it's separated by Canada. And there's a lot of tribes, people, Inuit tribes, people, and and Eskimos that live in Canada in the forest still. And they have a fourth system. So you got the metric system, you got the imperial system, you got the forest people system, and then you got the forest native system. And probably more that we don't know about yet, but don't underestimate the systems. Yes, yeah. There's a number of measurement systems in Canada, and it's you know, you're gonna want to familiarize yourself with all of them before embarking on your adventure mm -hmm. to Canada. Another don't don't be late. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Canada is notoriously punctual. Um, being late is severely frowned upon and can get you in a lot of hot it's water punishable. with, the, it's with punishable. The, um, the Royal Mounted Police. Yeah. That's you get a fine. They can hold you indefinitely. That's another thing is don't don't go messing with the Royal Mounted Police. <coughs> these are the Mounties. These aren't um, friendly police like we're known to have here in America. These these Mounties will will I mean I don't think they have guns so they can't shoot you dead they can't they can't just shoot yeah. you dead like an American cop but, but they're they can, real Dudley do anything now so yeah because... they'll they'll I mean I'm sure they have some sort of means of defending themselves and they will take they have sword. swords right that's it. that feels right yeah. and they like ride they, they ride horses they yeah. have swords swords they have the hat that, yeah. And they have free reign of all of Canada. I think. They don't. I don't think they have the power to arrest you or detain you in any way in Canada. But they can give you a stern, stern talking to. I think the horse can trample you, and they could say it's yeah. an accident. Yeah, yeah, sure. Each each mountie gets like so many accidents yes. just because horses are unpredictable. And then also, like, say one of them gives you some sort of citation, you go to you, you don't want to be caught up in the Canadian court system because you've got the judges with the powdered wigs. Oh yeah, you got powdered wig judges still. You want to immediately leave Canada, and Canada is now off limits. You can never return. Yeah, yeah, it's very easy to mm -hmm. be kicked out of Canada and banished for for <coughs> you know the rest of your life. Yeah. So also, I heard that if you do anything ever bad that canada will ask you about it they'll pull you off to the side they'll grill you they'll ask you for times and dates and people and all this information on a lot of times it's a it's not even like a charge it's just maybe some sort of interaction with police that you had where you didn't get arrested or charged with anything but all of that is written down and documented and that goes into your fbi file which is what Canada gets when you go there. They get your FBI file. So nothing drops off. They get your juvenile records and everything. And if there's anything questionable in there, even if it was fucking 30 years ago, they still like make a big deal and they'll turn you away. Like mid vacation, you're out of here. So you don't want to go in through a regular port of Canada. You don't want to enter through a major airport. You don't want to enter through, um, like some sort of a like a bay or 
some sort of dock, like a major port. You want to come in small operation. You think like a coyote that brings people from Mexico to the U S you want to go from the U S to Canada, make sure you have your passport. That way you could just come back normal, but you want to sneak in. And also you're going to want to look out for actual coyotes because they, you know, the coyotes in Canada, they're a lot, a lot bigger. Cause they have to fight and, the bears. Yeah, exactly. They're a lot bigger than the ones we have here, which are already fairly, you mm-hmm. know, dangerous. You don't want to encounter them. So be on the lookout for, for these Canadian coyotes. Another thing is don't go expecting to find, you know, hotel accommodations. That's not how things work in Canada. Yeah. Um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go, once you get into Canada, you're going to meet a Canadian who's going to, um, it's kind of like an Airbnb system without like the app or the internet or anything like that. It's just like you, you meet a Canadian and he's going to tell you of another Canadian who has a, a room open for that night. Yeah. At that point, you're going to you know travel to the, the place, introduce yourself, be like, hey, I was told that there might be accommodations for me here for the night. And then you, you'll make some mm-hmm. sort of deal with that Canadian you know, and stay Using in the private the bartering residence. bartering tipping system very, that we talked about I mean, about there, there's, there's some hotels in Canada, but very, very, very few. So they're going to be booked up you know, yeah. f- long in advance. So you're looking at like a one man hostel type situation. Yes, yes, but but it's written into their constitution that that um, if they have the room for for a traveler, that you know, it's kind of like have how to do it. we kinda, can harbor a soldier. Kind of like how, um, yeah, like we have the in the, thir- the our constitution, the Third Amendment says that you don't you do have to take a soldier if they. No, you don't. You don't. A soldier can't take quarters in your house. Yes, in Canada, it's the opposite. A traveler can take quarters in your house. It doesn't even have to be a soldier. Yeah, it's just an American traveler. And um, they also have an open door policy in Canada. They don't lock their doors, which we've talked about before. Yeah, there's no locks, no keys in Canada. No locks, no guns, no reason to lock your door. Everyone's nice. Everyone's cool. Even the bears. And plus, you know, if you uh, borrowed some sugar from your neighbor... And you just went to the grocery store and you re-upped on sugar and you want to go replace that cup of sugar that you borrowed. You just want to be able to walk in, open their pantry, dump some of your sugar into their sugar, let them continue dinner in the living room. Like, and you use that as a traveler to where when you go and make these deals with these Canadians, you don't have to knock. Don't knock. Just go right in, walk through the unlocked door. Find the person in whichever room of the house they're in, and then that's where you do the hearty handshake. Do a nice hearty handshake. Yeah, and just kind of like introduce a head nod, yourself. Head nod, yeah. Let them know that you're looking for room and board, and then boom. They and then to. another thing you're gonna don't you're not gonna want to use your typical American accent. You're gonna it's you know um, custom in Canada to speak in the accent of wherever you know you're traveling. So say you're up in French Canada, you're gonna want to do your best French accent. They're yeah. gonna appreciate that. They want to mm-hmm. hear you speak in their their native accent. So and then also in Canada, certain parts like Toronto, I believe. Um, the the common accent is a Jamaican patois for for some oh. reason. So you're gonna want to speak like a Jamaican in, in various parts of they southern do the Canada. island the island life there. Yeah, 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 man. <laughs> uh, what a crazy place, dude! I'm excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm, excited I'm so to excited to go to, to go to Canada. Um, so hopefully you guys learned something from that. I know that we did. I know yeah, that we I know that our video is gonna be way better than than Walter's world. I'm sure he has a Canada video also, and he's just gonna give you misinformation. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, maybe next week we can go over some highlights of that, of his Canada video, and see if we had any parallels. I really hope so. Um, But until then, um, oh, I guess we forgot to do the relief he had. We could do that at the end, and then we could uh, pretend to splice it in the the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, This episode was brought to you by Reliefy. Reliefy is a two-in-one vape pen slash e-nail. Okay, you take your material, you know what I mean? No, no, I, I don't know what you mean. Your material, quote, quote unquote. Well, like what kind? Of, like a, um, are you talking like copper? Are you talking like a um, like a hard? It's copper hard colored sometimes. Alloy. Okay, so look, this is a this is a device for. Um, are you talking about coal? <clears throat> this is a device for using, cannab- cannabis products. You got it? Oh, yeah. I think I'm on, dude. So you have this little heating element here, 
and you want to take your material, right? Take your material. You know what I mean? So like aluminum. No. Your material, your dabs, like your dabs, concentrates, like dabs. Material? I'm, I'm not following. Okay. Well, I think that <clears throat> maybe some people out there are. You take your material, you put it in here, and you could just hit it normal like a dab pen, walk around on, you know. How, how is this any different than this? It also looks like you could actually hit somebody with it as like a fist pack. If you if you get into a scuffle, yeah, you know, you maybe you're in Canada and you have to fight a Canuck, like you know, like a mm-hmm. hockey fight. So you turn it around. You have a button here, which you can you could uh, maybe take like a phone charger or something if you're like a Kia boy and you carry a phone charger with you. You can hold it on the bottom like this. Right here, I'll show you. Okay, so you take this cord, right? You put it in here. You fucking take this button, you put this cord right here, like uh, in your shirt or going up your shirt in your pants, and then you say, nobody fucking move, I'll press the button, and we're all going to go. I think you're strapped to a bomb, and you can you can make demands. Mm-hmm. You think you have a detonator, that's a weapon. If that doesn't work, you hit this, break this, because this is glass, it'll create a sharp... Like a shard, yeah. Yeah, like a shank kind of thing. Then you can, you know, uh, you could do one of these, depending on on your knife style. You can also just use it as a fist pack. Um, you can kill pigs with it. You know how they do right in the forehead with a pig, like where with like a, a bolt. bolt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this acts like a bolt oh, wow. when it's not broken, just because of the force of it. And then um, you could also use it. If you take this off, put it on the bottom, you could turn it around. You could use it as an e-nail. You put it inside your bong. I don't have the attachment. So this on really is like you. the Swiss Army knife of, of smoking de- smoking devices slash weapons. <laughs> it really is. And you can get your own at reliefy.com. Use the code NHP. Save 12%. 12%. We really had to fight tooth and nail for that 12%. Mm-hmm. Um, as we stated before, they wanted to give you 10. We were like, that's not good enough for our listeners. So take advantage, use that promo code, and purchase yourself a nice a nice reliefy. And you get this cool case, which, you know, looks like a nice sleek glasses case. You're like, oh, I forgot my glasses. Yeah, sure. You grab it. It's actually got material. You know what I mean? Be careful uh, taking that across the Canadian border, though. You should probably leave that at Yeah, you don't want to do that. You don't want to take Pretty that Pretty much Canada. everything is illegal in Canada. So much illegal pretty stuff. Sure. So, um, that's, uh, that's all we got. That's it. You want to add anything else? Um, be sure to subscribe still on the road to one K we're, mm-hmm. we're making, we're making progress, yeah. but we still need you to be sure to make those burner accounts and keep subscribing, baby. Drop a comment below and let us know, um, the don'ts that you have for visiting Canada. If you've been there mm-hmm. and if you haven't, like maybe give us some don'ts for visiting wherever you're from. That's right. And we love you. Natural Habitat Recordings.